Hey everyone, this is Phil, and today I want to talk to you about a very special camera. This is the Konica Gemba Kantoku 28mm WB Echo. Um, so um, we're gonna get rid of most of the name and just call it the Gemba Kantoku. Um, this is a uh, autofocus uh, self-winding uh, compact camera uh, that has a uh, fixed 28mm uh, 3.5 lens a built-in flash, um, so it's uh, not particularly remarkable in, in those aspects, but what makes it stand out uh, is the rugged body that it's housed in. This camera was made uh, to be used on uh, construction sites, um, so uh, Gemba actually means site or scene, and Kantoku means uh, director, manager or supervisor, so um, this was called the foreman's camera. Uh, and uh, it's, it was used uh, on construction sites um, to document uh, things like uh, cracks uh, that needed to be fixed and uh, work that was being done. So um, this camera has uh, multiple features uh, that make it uh, particularly uh, usable for this kind of environment. Uh, so it is uh, waterproof. Uh, it's uh, JIS uh, standard, so Japanese industry standard uh, level 7, which means that it is uh, submersible uh, up to one meter. And uh, you can tell um, if you open it up, uh, there's all sorts of uh, rubber gaskets and stuff. So um, this is obviously uh, waterproofed and uh, that also makes it uh, dust resistant and uh, sandproof. Uh, which I'm not quite sure uh, how that's different from dust proofing, uh, but apparently it's sandproof as well. It is also shock resistant, uh, so if you want to chuck this thing through the room, uh, it's not going to break on you, um, which is also great because like any uh, point and shoot compact camera, this has a lot of electronics in the inside, um, so these are a little more secured uh, than on many other cameras and uh, that makes it much more likely to stand the test of time. This camera was made uh, as part of a series started in 1994 uh, with the original Konica Gemba Kantoku and uh, it continued uh, until uh, the early 2000s uh, after which it switched over to digital. So there's a few uh, digital uh, Gemba Kantoku models available as well and uh, this was also sold as the off-road uh, branded camera series uh, overseas. Um, so you can see all the ruggedizing on, on the camera. Mine is uh, particularly dirty because I uh, grabbed it off of uh, Yahoo Auctions, which is our version of eBay basically. And uh, I just happened upon this uh, very uh, dirtied up, uh, paint stained uh, body that uh, immediately grabbed my attention. I just, uh, I thought it looked super cool and I had to have it. So this camera um, features a double grip. So there's a, a grip on the right, but also on the left hand side. So it's uh, obviously super uh, easy to grip, uh, grip securely if you're handling it on top of the scaffolding of a construction site uh, so you're uh, not gonna drop it and even if you're wearing gloves it's easy to operate. All the buttons are super big. Um, the dial to open the uh, casing uh, is very easy to handle as well. So everything is designed in a way that makes it easy to handle if even if you're wearing gloves and, and don't have the full control of your hands at the moment. This also uh, results in the camera being uh, quite a bit chunkier than a lot of point and shoots. Um, so it is it just fits in my medium sized hands uh, just, just right. And uh, it is definitely not something that you can uh, slip into a pocket easily. So that was something that uh, surprised and kind of disappointed me a little bit. Um, it's definitely much larger than I would have expected. Um, so um, don't expect, uh, if you're looking to buy one of these, don't expect it to be super compact. Uh, it is not. The minimum uh, focusing distance on the uh, Konica Gemba Kantoku is uh, 0.5 meters. Um, so that's a very respectable 
uh, distance uh, for a small camera and uh, the autofocus system uh, supports half pressing so you can uh, half press the shutter button uh, to lock your focus and exposure and then uh, aim it off uh, if you need to reframe. Shutter speeds range from uh, 1 4th to uh, 280th. So it, was, it is obviously uh, designed to be used with uh, 100 speed film or at the most 400 speed. Um, so it does not have the fastest shutter. And of course it has, has a fixed lens, a 28 millimeter 3.5, which is housed in this ruggedized casing uh, behind a filter. So this is not directly the lens. Uh, this has a protective uh, glass filter in front of it. Um, on mine that had a few tiny dents. Uh, I don't feel that it has impacted the image quality at all. The meter is uh, CDS based. Um, so it does require a battery uh, to meter. It can go uh, from uh, 5.5 to uh, 16.5 EV. The built-in flash has a range of up to 5 meters uh, on ISO 100 and uh, up to 10 meters on 400. It takes a 2CR5 battery. Um, those are obviously not the most common uh, batteries, but they're pretty easy to come by in uh, specialized electronic stores or camera stores. The Gemba Kantoku can take DX coated film uh, up to uh, 3200 um, and down to 25 ISO. Non coated film uh, defaults to 25. The finder is up here, uh, so it's a little offset from the uh, lens. Obviously, it's not uh, viewing directly through the lens, um, so you have to uh, keep parallax in mind uh, if you're taking close up shots. Uh, but it do, does have offset uh, parallax correction frame lines. So if you're looking at the uh, manual, uh, you can find a few examples of what this uh, camera was intended to do. Um, there's a lot of uh, photographs and illustrations in there, which are fun to look at uh, if you're not particularly uh, familiar with construction. And uh, it even has this little uh, feature of a nameplate that is built into the top of the casing uh, with a fun little uh, worker illustration. Um, this is something that is very common here in Japan on the construction site uh, signage um, that usually says uh, safety first. Unfortunately, I don't have uh, the nameplate that came with the camera and I'm also missing a remote. Um, because one of these holes up here is a remote infrared receiver. Um, so it has a uh, remote control for, I guess, selfies or uh, I don't know what you would uh, have to use a remote for in a, a construction context. Um, but apparently that is something that people use. There are certain models of the uh, Konica Gemba Kantoku that have a date back. Um, so, um, Mine doesn't have it, but here there would be a date display as well as buttons to set it. And it would be able to print the date on the photographs. The camera uh, switches on very, very quickly. Um, so once you flip it on, you can hear it uh, move the lens into position. And that's just an instant really. And uh, the mode button uh, starts with auto flash, uh, like most of the compact cameras of the time. Uh, you press it once to switch the flash to always on. Uh, so that would be uh, what you would use for fill light in uh, brighter situations, then off, uh, so no flash at all, and then uh, a timer or remote mode. Uh, and the last mode that you have is a infinity lock um, so that just uh, locks the focus to infinity and the flash is still set to auto. Loading the film is quite easy. Um, you twist the dial so the back pops open. You place a roll of film in there, pull it over to the right side, um, just uh, align it to where it says to align the film and uh, make sure that the sprocket is engaged. Then you close the camera and it 
automatically advances the film to the first frame. So unfortunately, uh, like older rangefinder cameras, uh, you do not get any extra frames on this camera. So if you have a 36 labeled film, you're gonna get exactly that frame count out of this. I bought this very late last year and took it on a few walks through the city as well as a uh, cocktail party uh, that I went to with some friends. Uh, so I do have a few shots in there that have uh, flash, uh, but otherwise I'm using it in my usual settings, which as you all know, is uh, just uh, the urban and suburban uh, parts of Tokyo and the surrounding areas. So I'm gonna show you a few pictures of this camera and I hope you enjoy them. So what I found uh, using this camera is that it produces very sharp images, uh, which is understandable since it's uh, intended for documenting stuff. So um, I was very happy with the operation of this, of this camera. It's uh, very reliable and uh, always produced uh, very good exposures for me. Um, the only thing that I don't like about it is, as I said, it's very bulky. Um, so it does not fit in a uh, pants pocket or uh, a smaller uh, coat pocket even. Uh, so keep that in mind if you're looking to buy one of these. But otherwise, I've been very happy with this camera and it's definitely a looker. Um, so it, you might have noticed that I really appreciate the color orange. Uh, that is actually why I first uh, got this. I saw it uh, on my friend John's Instagram feed. Uh, you can look him up at uh, Tokyo Camera Style. Um, and that was probably the first camera that I've seen that is in orange. It has that kind of uh, chunky, really heavy machinery looking type feel. And I really appreciate that design. So I looked it up and I found this really dirty and uh, battered up. Uh, copy of it and I thought that was very fading uh, considering what it's originally designed for. Uh, so I just uh, went for it. It cost me about, uh, I would say 50 US dollar. Um, so it's not super expensive, especially for point and shoot cameras now that nowadays that produce similar uh, results. Uh, it is very affordable and it has definitely served me well. So that's my little review of the Konica Gemba Kantoku 28WB and uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, uh, please remember to give this video a thumbs up, um, subscribe to the channel. Uh, I have recently noticed that about 98% uh, of my viewers are not sub subscribed to the channel. So I would uh, definitely love if you did. And obviously the most fun thing that you can do is drop me a comment. I'm always ha happy to see comments because it lets me know that there's actual people watching these videos. So um, thank you for joining me today um, and I hope to see you again.